back. I see you will see him until next year, so I'm happy to be back. It was obviously a long lockdown period, but just tell us how you've kept yourself physically and mentally fresh during that time and what you've been what you've been up to in training. I've been doing a lot of ten mile jogs. Um the first one was a push to me. I thought I'm I thought I'm gonna die. You know what I mean? Like I've never done a run like that before and since then I've been doing a lot of ten mile jogs and um training with my brother. You know, a lot of outside training in the park with my um my main training partner here in Noah. I'm just spending a lot of time with my kids. And you're heading into this fight with um, a 9 0 record, perfect record in your career so far. Um, is there an added pressure to, to sort of keep that unblemished record that you've got and then try and make it a perfect 10? There's no pressure on my side, no pressure at all. Um, people have been saying ever since I started my, my career, they feel pressure because obviously my brother being Leon and stuff. But even though they're an amateur and I was fighting, after my last amateur fight, I was 9 and 0, and I was fighting a guy, and he was defeated, and he was 11 and 0, and everyone was asking me, then do you feel the pressure? I never felt nothing, so it's the same with this one. There's no pressure on my shoulder. All right, we'll go to uh, Sean Sheehan for the first question. Uh, hi, Fabian. How are you? Um, I just want to ask you about a uh, headline in the card. I saw you were sitting playing uh, some chess with Liam McCord earlier on and she was in the same <laughs> position uh, earlier in the year. What's your yeah. feelings to be headlining this card and your, your uh, face and your name on the poster? It feels good. You know, it feels good. I feel like my hard work is paying off and um, yeah, I'm just getting the respect I deserve. So I'm happy to be main event in um, a better talk card. It's a huge thing for me. Uh, I spoke to you uh, last year and we were talking about how maybe it's a bit tough to get uh, matchups and how some of the, the best people in the top of the division over in America maybe even will we'll be avoiding you, similar to your brother, as, as you mentioned uh, earlier on. You have this fight now against Costello and obviously the last one against uh, Mike Shipman as well, which were obviously big names in this sort of area. Do you feel like you're starting to get those big fights now and that more people will be willing to fight you the, the more your name grows? Yeah, I feel, I feel that way. Um, of course, it is big names. Seeing that I jumped in the promotion, um, I saw the bullet and I thought Chadwick was you know, the former champion in another respectable organization. So I've been acting pretty big names since I jumped in, into the um, promotion. So I'm happy I'm, I'm getting these guys now. Mm -hmm. in, in the first two and a half years, I was looking at your record today, you fought nine times and it's been a 10 month layoff now. You know, as you said, yeah. in your amateur career as well, you fought a lot and fought very regularly. Is, has that been any bit of a struggle, the fact you just haven't been in the cage for that amount of, period, uh, amount of time? Oh, no, it hasn't been a struggle at all. Um, I've just been focusing on bettering myself, you know, because there's always room to improve and always skilled to learn and, and put into your game. So that's what I've been work, focusing on. That and just mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Last thing from here. Do you, do you feel like this is the last fight maybe before you jump into that next level, the Musasi Lima level, maybe if they'll be fighting soon? Is that is that where you feel you're, you're going to next after this? Yeah, that's the level that, that I'm going for next. You know, um, I don't want to be fighting no one else in the UK, no one else in Europe. I want to be fighting these American guys or, 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 or all these big names. So that, that's, that's the, oh, the guys that I'll be calling for next. Great. Thanks very much, Robin. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, Santiago. Hi, Fabian. How are you doing? What up? You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you for asking. So, Fabian, you are 9 0 right now, with most of your yeah. wins being actually easy wins. You never really got into any real danger. Is this the fight with Costello that you were looking for to really put your name in the mix of title contention? Yeah, I feel like this fight will put me up there and in the talks of a title, you know, um, he just fought a former champion. So after I beat him, my name will be up there in talks of the title as well. So, yeah. Are Jai and Leon going to be in your corner? Yeah, I'll be having Leon and my um, my training partner, Kieran North. Jai, Jai is over here, but he, he's cornering one of the other guys. All right, for two short questions for me. Would you like to compete in a beautiful city like Amsterdam in the future? I would love to. I might, I might stop off in Amsterdam. Um, I'm a, I'm a flight back. I might, I might miss my flight to Birmingham. Actually, I stay over there for a couple of days. So, yeah, I like to fight there. Awesome. And the last thing for me, Team Renegade is the top team right now in Europe. What do you think is the reason for this? I just think it's um, it's the energy. You know, what I mean, um, 
everyone down there is just so willing to to help each other. You know, there, there's no ego and no one trying to hide anything or there's no bad vibes. You know, um, and that's why it's everyone bouncing off each other and picking each other up. So that's that's why we're we're, we're the top team in Europe. Greetings from Holland and good luck on the Saturday night, Fabian. Yeah, thank you. All right, we'll take a couple more questions. Uh, Emmett Glenn, line is live. Uh, hi, Fabian. Uh, just a quick one. Um, just leading up to this fight, there's been a hell of a lot of bad blood between yourself and uh, Van Stenis online. Is this personal or is this still business for you? It's always business and it's always personal. It doesn't matter who I'm fighting. And that's just how I approach each fight. You know, um, yeah, and that, that's that's all I can say about that. It's personal and business for me because I also get paid to do what I do. But at the same time, I, I hold ill feelings towards anyone that I fight. And where, where did the bad blood originate from? Uh, I know you had a bit of a back and forth. Fans Dennis said that you were sending DMs and stuff. Has this been going on <laughs> before the fight was announced? <laughs> or? No, that was when, that was after the fight got announced. That was after the fight got announced, you know, um, but... <laughs> yeah, bad blood. So if you're fighting me, there's gonna be bad blood, and that's it. End off. You know, I'm not gonna be your friend. I'm not gonna have a friendly approach. You're trying to go in there and take my head off my shoulder, so I'm gonna be your friend. You know what I mean? So that that's it. You know, um, that boy's fighting me. I don't like that. I never will. So and then just uh, one last one. A lot of people are saying you're probably the best chance of bringing a title back to the UK, a Bellator title. How does that make you feel? Yeah, I feel good, but it's already something I knew. You know, I mean, um, when I signed for the organization, that's that's what that's that was my plans. You know, I wasn't here to make up the numbers and just get paid and go home and, and be a nobody. I mean, I came into this promotion to to um to win titles, so it's good that everyone else is recognizing that as well. Cool, that's everything for me. Absolutely cracking match up, but best of luck. Yeah, thank you, brother. Right. Next question from Gareth Davies. Uh, hello, um, Fabian. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? <laughs> Good. Um, can I ask what it means to you? Obviously, you've headlined Bellator before against Mike Shipman in, at Wembley. What it means to be headlining the first kind of major MMA event back in Europe after six months? Um, it means a lot. You know, it means a lot, and it just shows. It goes to show the the respect that the promotion have for me. So I'm happy that they they can see the potential, and, and yeah. Where does this project you um, in the division of victory over this guy on Saturday night? Oh, the likes of John Sosa. Hello. Where does this project you in the division with a victory over him on Saturday night? This will shoot me up to, to I believe, like one fight away. Did you, do, you, do you think that, sorry, it might be a bit noisy where I am. Do you think yeah. that, um, can you just give me your thoughts on Douglas Lima and Gegard Mousasi for the middleweight title in, in a little while? I think that fight will be a fight rounder, and um, I'm pushing more towards Lima to be honest because Massas is not a massive middleweight, and they're both similar in, in their styles. You know, they're both flat footed, and but Lima tends to explode a bit more. Where where Massas seems to go at one pace, doesn't matter if he's winning or losing, he just maintains that same pace. So I'll probably lean towards Lima. I don't think he will stay in the division. I think he's just coming to achieve that goal and and then go back to welterweight. Would you beat Lima now at middleweight if you stepped in with oh, him yeah. on Saturday night? Yeah, you don't need to finish the question. Yeah, his stars, you know, his stars. I'm watching these fighters and they're all flat footed and stiff. They're very deliberate with, with their shots and with what they do. What would you do to Douglas Lima then? I just do what I do, which is fakes, feints, joy shots out and pick him apart. You know, um, like I said, these guys are very like Thai or Dutch. You know, um, and that's it. And I don't really tend to explode. And I'll be the bigger man in there if I was fighting Lima. And I'll be the bigger man if I was fighting Misasi as well. So, yeah, I just, I just do what I do. Do you want victories over both of them on your resume in the end? Yeah, 
Yeah, I would definitely want to clear, to clean out those guys. I've said it that I want to run through the whole division. You know, once I get to the top and I get that title, I don't want no one to say, oh, you know what, you missed out that guy. You missed out that guy. I want everyone to say, okay, actually, it's for everyone. And that's what I'm going to do. Final thing for me, for now, Fabian, is um, um, how was lockdown for you? Were, you? were you with Leon, your brother, and training together? What, how was the six months? Yeah, six months was all right, you know. Like I said, I, I was grinding my brother in the garage. Um, our strength and conditioning coach, Johnny, he, he was putting on good program. program. I was doing um workout in the parks. I was running. So I, I never really took my foot off the gas pedal. You know, um, I was just trying to focus on being a, a better fighter. And, and sadly, I get to show that. Thanks very much, buddy. I'll see you later today. Right, thank you. See you soon. Yes. All right. Thank you very much, Fabian. I appreciate it. Thank you. Shipman? Mark, it's been a couple of questions from the room. Mark, it's been a long time coming, but Bella saw Europe is it, finally back. It's felt like a long time. Just just tell us how you're feeling now that Fight Week's finally here. Yeah, um, yeah, relieved, excited. Yeah, it's just good to be back. It's been been ten months since uh, since my last fight. Obviously, everyone's been going through going through the same same kind of struggles. But yeah, it's just great great to be back. And it was six months of lockdown. Just just tell us how that was for you. Um, what you got up to? How you kept yourself fit and fresh, physically and mentally? Uh, I actually found it um, quite useful. It, it gave me the opportunity to uh, to really have a kind of a new perspective. It kind of took me out of my day to day routine and, and gave me a new perspective. Obviously twenty nineteen wasn't uh, wasn't a good year for me professionally. Um, and uh, it just allowed me to kind of like sit back and uh, and, and actually you really analyze uh, kind of from the outside of, of my normal stream of, of life of, of what I need to do, what I need to change. Um, and on top of that I got to do a lot of bonding with my with my young girl, which was was really nice. Um, See so, yeah, her come along a lot in those six months. So uh, for me, it was a uh, it was a very positive thing. Great. And you, you know, you just said that it was a um, a long lockdown period, a chance for you to reset. What are the kind of things that that you've looked to to implement during that time that you're going to take into the Saturday night? Um, it's it's more about the the, the kind of the preparation stuff. I, I found I found um, being being away from the team. And, and having to take responsibility for your own training and, and keep fit and things, it allowed me to, to kind of step up and take a bit more responsibility. Whereas before, I kind of I think I lent too much maybe on my on my coaches and my team, um, and just uh, they've got uh, my coaches have got a whole stable of fighters to to be looking at and and thinking about what they need to work on everything. So whereas maybe in the past I was kind of maybe leaving up to them to be like, well, if I need anything working on, they're going to tell me. But obviously, no one's going to know your body. No one's going to know holes and flaws in your game as well as you yourself um they see a lot but they don't know they're not going to be able to see everything that's uh in your day-to-day -day life so that kind of time where i was kind of in charge of my own training schedule and stuff it, it made me step up a bit and kind of really analyze analyze myself um honestly what, what do i need to work on um my recovery as well step up on my recovery and and just all these kind of little details which i've kind of been giving the responsibility away too much. Uh, I took a bit more to myself. And it's a, it's a main card dominated by middleweights on Saturday. Is this a chance to sort of put yourself back in the shop window, so to speak, and, and show the division you know, what you're capable of? Yeah, for sure. That's, um, I, I don't think it's a coincidence that um, uh, the main event is the two guys that, uh, that beat me last year. Well, debatably, one of them <laughs> beat me last year. But um, it's no coincidence that I think I'm the uh, the co-main event of this. Um, that's going to put me right back in the picture of, uh, of getting a rematch with one of these guys, and um, and then from then on uh, going towards that title. All right, Tudor Leonte. Hello, Mike. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. How are you? I'm fine as well. Thank you very much. Is this the first time you came to Italy? Yes, it's my first. Uh, it's my first fight in Italy. I've, I've been over here a few times for uh, uh, for sparring, um, uh, and uh, yeah, really like the country. 
Um, I, yeah, I've, I've come here to Marvin Vittori used to uh, used to train at Shoot Fighters, so I've I've been over to train with him in the past, um, and uh, yeah, I've been, I've been a couple of times to a couple of different gyms. About uh, your upcoming fight, uh, um, did you get the chance to study the battle between Charlie Ward and uh, Pietro Penini? Yeah, yeah, I've, yeah, I've that. And uh, what do you expect from uh, your uh, opponent on Saturday night? Um, it was hard to say because he he gave Charlie Ward's power a lot of respect, um, and I, I, I thought they had a good game plan, kind of boxing, counter boxing. Um, I actually think he looked a bit slicker in that fight than he has done previously. Um, obviously, I carry a lot of power as well. Um, I, I envisage he'll be trying to do something similar with me. Uh, we'll be trying to kind of uh, move around the room, move around the cage, uh, and and trying to outbox me for the win. Um, but having watched his previous fights as well, he he likes to come in and mix it up as well. But judging how the last one went, it worked for him. Uh, I think he'll be he'll be going for a similar game plan with me. Uh, last one for me. In case of victory, would you like to challenge uh, whoever is going to win the main event for a rematch? Yeah, one hundred percent. One hundred percent. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna fight the winner of that. Um, yeah, the Fabian fight is. I don't think anyone won that fight. To be honest, um, I, 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 it's, it's, a, it's, it's a loss on my record, and uh, and there's lessons to be taken from that. I'm not happy with my performance. Um, But I don't see how he can be happy with that either. Um, that that you know we should that hasn't been settled as far as I'm concerned. Um, the Costello fight, I got caught. He, he that that was uh, that that was his win. Um, but for me again, I I, I watched that fight and I, I know how I feel in that fight and I I feel that's a winnable fight for me as well. I felt like I was in control um, and he caught me and that's the game. That's uh, that's MMA, but. I think we run that back again. I, I think I'll win that fight. And on top of that, I think it's impossible for me and Costello not to have a great fight. Just from how our styles are, I think someone's going to get knocked out in that fight. Um, so I, it just makes sense that, that 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 would happen again if he wins. Thank you very much, sir. Good luck for your fight. Thank you. Gareth? Hello, uh, Mike. How are you? Hey, I'm very good. How are you? Very good, thank you. Um, I wanted to ask you first of all: all six of you, the middleweights on the on the main card, are all kind of locked down in the hotel in Milan. Mm. Is it kind of have you all got to just keep yourselves together a little bit because you're all big rivals? I mean, there's 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 antipathy in all corners from different people in different ways. You might not have it towards Kent, but you might have it towards Will and Fabian and Uh, it's, how, how is it? How does it feel in the hotel? Uh, uh, it's to, to be honest. I've got, I, I get on well with Will. I, Will Will's a great guy. Uh, and Kent as well, great guy. Costello can't complain. It's all it's all amicable. There is uh, there, there is one uh, there is one character who that they obviously fade in. Like I don't think he gets on with anybody. Um, but <laughs> he's just an awkward character. That's just who he is. Like that's that's his style. But. Um, Who, who's yeah. that, Mike? Who's that? Well, yeah, Fabian. Sorry, I said, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone else is. Everyone else seems. Uh, everyone else, you know, is fine getting along with him. Again, like he's a professional. It's not. It's not like there's. It's not like there's any issues. It's just that that that's the fight game. You don't have to be friends, but um, we're here to do our job, and uh, and uh, we're not here to like to be chums. But you know, I, I get on with most of the guys. Just uh, just just Fabian is the uh, is the one who I who I don't particularly like, but it's not an issue. Obviously, we remember what happened in the Wembley, um, uh, the Wembley Hilton um, ahead of your fight. There was a with him last year. There was a, kind of a, let's say a ruckus, let's say, or a, it wasn't. It wasn't. A, it was. It wasn't a big fight. It was a ruckus at the at the weigh-ins. Um, mm -hmm. do, do you deliberately stay out of the way with each other because of these are exceptional circumstances in this hotel? Because I, I wonder if you and he could kick off. And, and you know, unordinarily. Uh, I don't. I think it's unlikely to be honest. I mean, there, there might be a, a comment here or there, but um, 
it's like we're, we're, we're both here we've, we've got different focuses at the moment like he, he he's doing what he's doing and I'm doing what I'm doing and obviously we want to beat each other up but we want to get paid when we're doing it and we want people to see. um uh, I mean it's po- anything's possible like uh, <laughs> so some might go too far but um I don't anticipate there'll be there'll be any trouble um do you think every day about the two guys you lost to last year and like when you go to the gym do you think about that every day are you that kind of person or do you compartmentalize it and um obviously because you want obviously you've got to win on saturday night that that's very important but in terms of rematching these two guys is it something that you psychologically focus on each day when you go to the gym uh, i wouldn't say so i'm, I'm uh uh, my my uh, my character is quite easy going. Like uh, obviously it, it stings and uh, 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 yeah it, it hurts to lose. Um, but it's uh, I I think of it in so far as it's useful to think about it. Um, I think about it in terms of uh, why did I why did that happen? Why did I what what went wrong here? What can I change for next time? Um, particularly with Fabian, that was. There's been a lot to break down and 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 think about that fight because really that was mine for the taking in a lot of ways. Like um, it just 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 even just like just being a bit more tactical with it, just like holding the top position instead of letting him stand straight back up. And on top of that, I think just my my attitude going in of of, of looking to looking to to win a fight to to win a decision when when I should be in there fighting. So. Um, yeah, I think about it in so far as it's used to think about it. It's not something I, I lose sleep about. That's not yeah. not necessarily my, my personality type. Um, I mean, obviously, it, it, it keeps you up a bit the, the, the first couple of weeks or so. But beyond that, um, it, it's counterproductive. Two, two more questions for me, because the, the others have asked um, the, a few of the things I wanted to ask. You were talking about some... You were stepping up. It was really nice to hear that, that you were taking things into your own control and empowering yourself in lockdown with your training system. Did you do anything different to what you had ever done before? Or like, did you go rowing? Did you go cycling? Did you paddleboard? Did you, did you do cross-training in any other way? What, did, what were the, the novelties of lockdown that you haven't done before? Okay, you all... Um... One of the things is just I always I set up some uh, I set up my weights in my garden. Uh, I started running a bit more, um, and uh, I start once uh, once it was allowed for professional athletes to get back into training, but we had to still be socially distanced. Um, there's a CrossFit gym nearby that 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 really helped us out um, called CrossFit Kia. So they actually looked up the the guy who runs it. Actually looked up the legislation, um, and he got us back. Uh, training slightly earlier than we would have done otherwise, which was uh, very useful. Um, but mainly the thing was, it's not so much the the training methodologies or anything that 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 I needed to change. I mean, it's uh, like learning sheep as the coaches; they really know what they're doing. But what I'd done is I'd I'd become a bit psychologically lazy uh, in terms of I trusted the coaches so much that I put all of the all of the burden, all of the onus on them. So when I was done in the gym. I didn't really have to think about it anymore because they took care of the thinking, they took care of what I needed to do, uh, what training what I need to work on. Um, and then just doing that, doing the, uh, just, just having that time moan and having to, to take, take it into my own hands, I realized that there's so much more I, 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 I can be doing in terms of my, I, my recovery could be more on point. Um, I can be sitting down and just breaking down the things I need to, like mentally breaking down my day, what I need to work on, what I need to improve. And then, Acting it out through shadow boxing, which is for me uh, a tool. So many times how invaluable it was um, shadow boxing, but really I, I hadn't really, I hadn't really done it as much as I should have done, and, and visualised as much as I should have done. So again, that was that was very useful. So I'd say, um, yeah, it was it was it was about just taking responsibility for my own development um, and uh, and the, the, the holes in my game. Um, the vacant title's coming up. Your quick pick on Douglas Lima against Gegard Mousasi. How do you see it, Mike? That's a, that's a tough one, but um, I find it hard to bet against... I hard, find it hard to get bet against Mousasi, especially as you expect him to be, to be the bigger man going in. Um, 
he might the, the thing he, he might start be looking like he's, he's he's beginning to slow down a little bit um and obviously Lima's got that got that big power which I think he'll he'll carry to, to middleweight as well but I, I yeah I think I think I've got to give just an all-around game and just experience that I've got to lean towards Masasi. Lovely. Um, and finally, um, with an opponent who sounds like a sandwich, Panini, mm-hmm. do you chop him up into quarters and uh, do him in his... Well, he's from Verona, but is that what you do? Do you chop him up like a sandwich? No, it's a, it's a, a sandwich isn't a full meal for me. You know that, guy. So it's a snack. So. <laughs> no, um, uh, yeah, I, I, there's, loads of, there's loads of Panini banter to be had, but uh, it, it, in all fairness, I'm, I'm taking it seriously. Um, uh, but yeah, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna take this seriously. And uh, it, you're happy to feast on victory, basically, aren't you? There we go. I, I'm I'm trying to think of puns, but I'm cutting away. You're happy to feast on victory. You can steal the line. The there we go. There we go. Nice to see you, mate. Thank you very much. You too. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Mike. I appreciate your time. We'll be joined next by Luke Trainer. All right. Okay. All right, we're now being joined by Luke Trainer. What's going on? Take a couple questions from the room, and if you have any questions uh, online, please use the raise hand feature. So, Luke, it's been a long time for, for Bellator Europe, but an even longer time for you. It's fight week now. Um, just tell us how you're feeling. Oh, good, man. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> Bellator, my mate. Uh, yeah, it's a blessing, man. I'm, I'm very grateful for the opportunity. Been a long time coming. It's been almost a year since my last fight now, so ready to get in on Saturday and smash, get to work, and uh, yeah, on to the next. I'm really looking forward to. It. And just tell us over over lockdown, how have you been keeping fresh? It was a long old time, and um, just mentally, physically, what were the things you were doing just to keep on top of your game? Uh, do you know what? It's, I've had a few questions like that. My camp this uh, for this fight has probably been my best to date. Um, the fact that I've had no major injuries has been amazing, not like my last camp. Um, but I've been training, I've been training at home, I've been making it work, and then my coach, my main training partner, we've been keeping active, we've been keeping our work going, uh, whether in a park or 
flipping Tesco's car park is all good. We're, uh, we've been getting it in, and then my gym, Titan Fire, opened back uh, about six, six weeks ago now. So, yeah, we've been, we've been putting in the work. Camp's been excellent. I've got no complaints. And, uh, yeah, I've, physically, I'm in shape. Mentally, this is the best I've ever felt. So, um, 100%, I'm ready to get it. You, you sound absolutely thrilled to be here. Just to just tell us in, in, in your own words, just how excited you are to be making your, your better tour debut on Saturday night. <laughs> Dude, this is like, for me, this is life changing. I got the opportunity after I fought uh, in the tournament back for EFN in October, and it was marketed as a life changing, you know, a life changing contract and um, the big step of my career. And I've really noticed that now. You know, I've, I was at the airport with my dad yesterday and I got picked up with someone with a name on my car. Like, <laughs> normally I'm used to someone dropping me off at a leisure centre or a strip club with sticky floors and now I'm fighting in the flipping arena in Milan. So, no, this is um, it's amazing. The experience so far has been great and I haven't even got to go fight and do what I love to do yet. So, uh, it's been amazing, man. I, I have no complaints. I, I even get free food, which is... <laughs> I had fish and couscous today. What? <laughs> yeah, it's been good, man. It's, it, it's a real fun experience. And like I said, the best part hasn't even come yet. So, I'm really grateful. And you, you're very used to fighting on home soil, but this is the first time, I believe, that you've fought away from home. Um, it won't be quite the same as, as having a, a packed arena, but mm. how does it feel to be, you know, travelling away and, and fighting in a, another country? Yeah, I mean, it's a bit of a catch-22. Uh, the last fight I was supposed to have was going to be at Wembley Arena. You know, that's twenty to 30,000 people. Um, <clears throat> I would have brought a squad with me, my family and friends. I would have had, like, my flipping PE teacher from back in the day come and watch me. So uh, everyone and anyone would have come to see me fight then. But that didn't happen. God willing, I knew I was going to get another opportunity. And now I'm fighting in Milan. You know, this is my first international fight. It's, um, it's, it's crazy to think that, you know, just last year, I, like I said, I was driving to Manchester. I was driving to Essex for these smaller shows. And now I've jumped on a plane and... Yeah, and I'm in Italy. I've never even been here before. So, I mean, I haven't got to experience it as much as I'd like to, being grounded in my hotel room. But at least I'm here. You know, the waitress seems really nice, and she's Italian. So I'm like, oh, bella. And that's enough. So it's, uh, it's, been, it's been good, man. And fine on international sport. So it's a, it's a good first experience for it. On to the next one. And uh, you've mentioned the waitress. You've mentioned the fish and couscous. <laughs> Italy is a, a country renowned for its cuisine. And I understand that you're into cooking yourself. Um, there's a few Instagram posts and videos um, of you cooking at home. Just tell us a little bit more about that. <laughs> you're talking about the infamous cooking with the gem. <laughs> Episode 10 just dropped last night, actually. Uh, yeah, so that's just a, listen, it's a bit of a way for me and my, uh, me and my supporters to connect. I love to cook. Um, whether I do it good or not, I don't know. <laughs> You'd have to tune in to, to decide for yourself. But um, but yeah, the uh, the cooking with a gent is only going to expand. Now this culinary experience has travelled into Italy. I've learnt a few things, you know. <laughs> I now mean, have couscous under my belt. So um, so yeah, no, that's just it's a bit of fun, man. Cooking with a gent. Tune in next week for the Italian edition. Edition, said I say. Hey, Tiro Leonce. Hello, Luke. Uh, by the way, uh, your Italian sounds really great. <laughs> I, I want to... <laughs> ciao. <laughs> ciao, ciao. I wanted to ask you, um, given that you know you had to really sweat your Bellator call call in an uh, eight-man one-night tournament, can you please elaborate your experience from that night? Yes, sir, of course. So I had three fights in one night. Um, <clears throat> it was it was a strange camp for me because I've never prepped for any more than one fight. And uh, I've known that opponent. Normally I get like a six-week notice, so I get to study that one opponent and know the weaknesses and strengths and how I'm going to game plan. This approach was completely different. This approach was, okay, there's eight men in this tournament. I have no idea who I'm going to fight. So let's just game plan to smash everyone with the tools that I do best. So it was um, it was a game plan so solely on what I could do and not worrying about what everyone else could do. So uh, it was a weird experience to prepare. And then when I got there, it was great. You know, my mantra was uh, great men do great things. I'd seen Israel Adesanya do the same thing years ago. And I just thought, all right, if he did that, that was like his rite of passage to do 
the things that he's done now. So the prep was strange, but when I got there, it was amazing. If Bellator ever want to run another tournament like that, I would hope they'd put me in it. I mean, I'm already here now, so <laughs> I don't know what I'd get for it. If they're going to offer me a little more cash, then we'll see what we're doing. But, uh, but yeah, I loved it. It was awesome. It was a great experience. Getting to the final was incredible. The crowd went nuts. Obviously, they built up with you as this show was going on. They'd get, they'd get to know each other a little bit more. The pressure was on. I had ex-teammates on the, on the show. I had an opponent that I once lost to as an amateur on the show. I had a couple of guys who'd called me out before, and the fight didn't happen. But, yeah, and the final couldn't have gone any better. It was great. It was an amazing experience, and I feel like I earned my shot to be here from doing that. I mean, if you look at my record, it says only one fight counts, but I hope those guys from Sapphology get the experience to have three fights in one night, too, because all of them counted in my mind. So, uh, so yeah, it was a great experience, and luckily I'm here now because of it. You had a way busier fighting schedule uh, than your opponent in the last couple of years. Do you think that uh, this will give you an edge over your uh, your next opponent? Um, I'll be honest, I have no idea. My my opponent hasn't fought for two years. I haven't fought for one year. So in my mind, how I've prepared for this fight is Alex O'Toole has been to Dagestan and Thailand, and he's been sharpening his tools to the utmost ability, and he's worked with some of the best athletes in the world. I have no idea if that's what he's done or not in my head, That's what I'm thinking. So I'm coming in thinking he's just taken these two years to prepare and do exactly what he needs to do to make sure he can beat me. With that, I'm coming in with the mindset of, cool, I've done the exact same thing. This year I've worked nonstop on all of my weaknesses and I've only increased my strengths. So I'm not looking at it as an advantage for me. I'm looking at it and think, cool, he's been sharpening that tool. I've been sharpening my tool. Let's see who's his sharper. And Saturday night, we're going to see. You seem uh, pretty excited right, about uh, your upcoming fight. How do you expect uh, the boat to end? In terms of like a Mystic Mac prediction, I have no idea. I believe I'm going to smash this man and I believe I'm going to finish him. Whether that's in round one, two or three, by knockout, TKO or submission, I don't know. I think I'm definitely going to get him out of there. The game plan is just to smash wherever it goes and be comfortable in whatever position, whether that's on the feet or on the ground, but only time will tell, and uh, I'm ready wherever it goes. Thank you very much, sir. Good luck for your fight. Ciao, ciao, my friend. Gary? Okay, I'm unmuted. Hello, Luke. How are you? Oh, hello, sir. I recognize your voice. <laughs> BT Sports, shout out. Hello. I'm good. I'm, and listen, it's really fantastic sitting here listening to you. I you can't see us, can you? No, sir, no. I cannot. Um, I've got to commend the pure enthusiasm. It's like seeing a giant or a young giant with the enthusiasm to take on the world. And it's, it's, it's very, very exciting to see from our perspective and certainly from mine, how, how into the whole experience you are of this, Luke. And um, I just want to ask, before you did the tournament last year and you got, you got, in, you got your place, if you like, everything's a reality TV show these days, basically, isn't it? Mm -hmm. you, you got your place in Bellator. What were you doing beforehand? You're a huge guy. You're very athletic. Was it always fighting? I mean, it's not even always fighting now, sir, if I'm honest. Um, I've, I'm, my, my goal is to be the greatest of all time. That's, uh, that's been my goal since, since I started in May at 18. And I, I hope that's going to be my goal until I retire. Um, what I do outside of the cage is what I see as my purpose. I work with children in care. I work with vulnerable children in schools. Um, myself and my family have fostered children since I was 12. Um, I'm a nanny as well. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, like Nanny McPhee, but just with a much better beard. Um, <laughs> I mean, in terms, in terms of my enthusiasm, I mean, look where I am right now. You know, I'm, I'm 
I'm sitting, I mean, not necessarily right here. The guys in the room are, are great. And uh, and this, this Zoom call is amazing. But I've got the opportunity to fight for Bellator. I've got the opportunity to be on the world stage. You know, I've, just through, I guess, through hard work and a lot of luck, you know, um, I'm here. And this is this is where I believe I should be. And I'm going to show the world on Saturday that I believe that I'm, I'm right and, and I should be here. But at the end of the day, my life is so beautiful. I've got a lot of people around me. I've got a lot of stuff outside of fighting. I've got a lot of children that rely on me and depend on me. And that gives me real purpose and passion in life. So this is all extra. This is like, it's, it's beautiful. I get to do what I love to do on Saturday. And then when I go home, I'm back to being Luke. You know, I'm back to next weekend. I've, I've got a weekend of nannying. I'm back into the schools. You know, I've got a couple of things in my community. So yeah, man, the passion just comes from living, realizing that this life is beautiful. It's very short. So I'm not going to be moody, man. I'm, I'm I'm smiling. You can't see it right now, but I'm smiling cheek to cheek. So, yeah, I don't know. Does, does the, the fact that you can also create a huge platform for yourself as a fighter mean that you will take that back to this thing that you obviously so intrinsically love as a human being that you're wired for connection with other people? Is it, it Can the two work hand in hand where, where your name grows as a fighter? You can use that to enhance what you're doing behind the scenes or in your normal life if i can put it that way oh yes sir you know i, I think the proof's in the pudding with athletes athletes similar to say aj you know anthony joshua the things he's done in his community the things he's done for watford and enfield and edmonton um the community centers that he works with things like that is exactly what i want to be doing you know martial arts in general has has taught me so much and they're transferable skills that i take to the children each and every day now, as my name gets bigger and as my fortune grows, people, will, people I'm hoping will gravitate towards me because of that. And then I'll be able to use that to do more good. You know, I've got plans to open up orphanages. I've got plans to do more work with schools. And as my name gets bigger, I'm hoping that's only going to become more of an opportunity for me. So, yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the hope. That the bigger my name gets, the more good I can do. And well, I think you're preaching from a hymn book that I love, Luke. It sounds fantastic, it really does. Listen, sir. Um, finally, sorry. I just said I'm glad we got people with the same mentality. Then, totally, totally. Um, um, but all the great trainers have always said to me that they're not just getting victories for their guys. If they're not making them better people while they do it, then they're not successful. And I think you're one of those guys. And I'm sure that Mickey Pappas and Brad Pickett, your coaches, do that with you as well. They're passing on the goodness that they know from their lives 20, 30 years in, in, in mixed martial arts, in martial arts. 100%. 100%. Yeah. Mickey, and Brad, Mickey and Brad are amazing. Brad, Brad's created his own team now with GP Top Team, but he'll always be an influence for me. He's always a guy who I can call on whenever I need, and he installed a lot of good technique but also morals in my life and mickey papas to this day man he's um he's he's a huge influence in my life he, he's a wizard of the sport and he also prides himself on trying to be a good human so yeah i try and surround myself by like-minded and good people and hopefully it'll work hopefully one day i can be as good as them guys hopefully you know but it's it's a it's a work in progress thank you luke look forward to meeting you later great words mate great words Pleasure, sir. thank you all right, thank you very much, Luke. We'll uh, let you go and be joined shortly by Costello Van Stimis. Have a beautiful day, guys. Thank you.
All right. We're now being joined by Costello Van Stinas. If you have a question, go ahead and hit the raise hand button. We'll start with a few from within the room. It's been a long time coming, but Bellator Europe is back. Fight week is back. You're here now. Just tell us how you feel. I'm feeling great. I was looking forward to this fight for a very long time. I could say even more than a year. I asked his name for a few times. Oh, look. Sandy came early. Finally. And it's been a lockdown period. And just tell us how it's been for you, what you've been doing to keep yourself busy and fresh and fit mentally and physically. Um, I've just been training the whole way out. Uh, I've been driving down to Spain two times. Even though when I was in Spain, I was training. I came back to Holland, was training straight away. So I'm not going to complain. He's going to have me at 100%. You and, uh, you and Fabian have both had recent wins over, over Mike Shipman. Um, is there anything you've learned from your fight with Mike and Fabian's fight with Mike that you can take into Saturday? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys will see on Saturday. All right, we'll open it up. Santiago. Hello, greetings from Amsterdam. We spoke to each other in London after you dominantly finished Mike Shipman. That same Mike Shipman gave Fabian problems for three rounds and took it to the judges' scorecard. Do you take anything away from that, or is this just a new fight and you're going into it with a clear mind? No, nah, this is going to be a new fight with a, with a different game plan or a new fight. It's going to be a total different, different level. I'm going to be a different person, so he's probably been studying me as well. But it's going to be a different fight for both, probably. But for me, on, on my side, it's going to be definitely different. So within one month, you and Gegard Musasi are going to headline a Bellator card. So there's a lot of enthusiasm and hype about this in Holland. Did you feel that as well? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, feel, uh, I think there's more hype now than ever before in Holland, to be honest. But that's good, you know. Holland's going by the year. Every year, there's more hype into MMA, so that's great. Yeah, no, you are somebody that, that stands your ground. But Fabian is known for getting physical during the weigh-in stare-downs. How are you going to react to this? Yeah, we'll see. I'm just going to... Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how I react and how far he goes. All right. Last thing for me, and, and thank you so much for the time. How important would it be for you to bring a Bellator event to Holland next year? Oh, that would be awesome. It's just fighting in your back garden. It's fighting at home. You don't need to do traveling or anything, or even though fighting in Italy is not much of a travel. But it'll be really great. I'll have a lot of people coming down as well. Thank you, Costello. The good at Amsterdam and success on Saturday evening. Thank you, Albert. Come in. Uh, Costello, thanks for your time, buddy. Uh, just a quick one. Uh, the beef between yourself and Fabian. How real is that? We know we slid under the DMs after the shipment fight, uh, but is there a, an actual anger there, uh, beef surrounding this fight, or is it just all for the, the show? No, I think, for my part, there is a beef. Like, he's, he's the one I wanted to fight for a long time because of his attitude. He's got a very cocky, stupid attitude. And I believe his part is probably fake because he does it with everybody. So, yeah, no, nah, it is real. But, yeah, it's real. Cool. And then just um, if you manage to beat Fabian on Saturday night, where, where's the next step? Is the rematch with John, is that something you would consider or would you like to move further along the line? No, after I beat Fabian, I'll definitely fight John Sawyer again. I don't know if he's up for it, but I don't mind, actually. I'll fight anybody after this fight, whenever. As long as I'm healthy, I'll just say yes to everything. Cool. Thank you very much, buddy. I'll fight John Sawyer next. Because, yeah, I don't, think we, I don't believe we finished this fight. It was like, could have gone both ways. And if it was championship rounds, it might have, it would probably have ended differently. Hi, um, Costello, it's Gareth. Um, I think they've unmuted me. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Hi, man, how are you? <clears throat> I'm fine. Yeah. I'm going to confess. I'm fine, I'm, I'm, 
I'm going to confess now. I'm in the hotel as well, and I didn't recognize you in the lift. Yeah, I now. saw you in the lift. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you look big, by the way. You, you, you look big. Um, are you on weight? Yeah, yeah, I'm on weight. Uh, since it's training camp, I'm heavier than normal. So I gained a little bit more than other fights, but I'm going to be on weight, definitely 100% sure. Um, you talked about the rematch with um, John Salter. Um, let's say that you do a number on Fabian and look spectacular and it goes around the world with a knockout, clean knockout or whatever it be, or a submission on Saturday night. And they offer you uh, a shot at the middleweight title and Gegard beats Lima. What do you do? I'd say give me the second. <laughs> no, I'm not going to fight, fight Gegard. He's, he's been helping me so much since the last yeah. five years I've been training with him. He's, he's helping me in every way, uh, lifestyle, training style, everything. So I'm not going to – I can't fight a guy that helps me with – yeah, with achieving my dreams, that's... No, I can't do that. I can't do that. It's very interesting, isn't it, how um, Liz Carmouche and Elima Leigh McFarlane may fight, and their teammates, and they might may fight for the belt, but it's so much harder for men to do it than women, potentially. Yeah, that is actually true. I mean, I mean of course, there are, there are people from the same gym that fight each other, like uh, Kamara Usman and... Uh, and uh, Gilbert are going to fight, but I don't know. I, I think our team is so small that we, we like to just achieve everything with our team and not, not fight each other. Yeah, I suppose it's like if you do do that, it's almost like have to forcing a divorce in the family, isn't it? You know? Yeah, yeah. You need to pick your trainers and your trainers need to pick who they're going to coach, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Can I, I've got a couple of other little questions that I didn't. I don't know the answer to. Um, where did you pick the name the Spaniard? Oh, I didn't pick it. Uh, my trainer Ricardo gave it to me uh, with the first amateur fight I did for him when I moved down to the Netherlands. And and what and why the Spaniard? Well, loads of people think because I'm growing up in Spain. I've been living in Spain for eighteen years, and then I moved down, uh, especially for MMA, to to reach the top. But he said. He gave me the nickname from the, um, the first amateur fight. I gave, I gave a front kick, and it was a really interesting fight. And he said, all right, this is from the movie from The Gladiator. So I'm gonna okay. Uh, I, that's what I, I wondered if it was that. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, brilliant. Um, <laughs> when you, you talked just now about, um, you said, um, with Fabian Edwards, and I think this is a brilliant matchup, by the way, and I cannot wait to see this fight, because I think you've both got great styles, and I think you're slightly quicker, and I think you're going to force the pace in this fight. That's what... Yeah, look, I'm right. I know. I can, no, but, but when I see your silhouettes moving, he's going to have to work, because you make people work. So, I am. Um, you, you said from, from me there is a beef. His attitude... He has a cocky, stupid attitude... Um, and he has that stance before every fight where he takes that view. Do you have to remove the emotion a little bit this week as well and stay unemotional because we are all very close quarters in the hotel together? Yeah, I mean, I've seen him a few times down at the lobby and he's trying to act cool. He just stares at me and says, I'm going to kill you, can't wait for Saturday. And I'm like, yeah, whatever, good. We can do it now if you want. He walks past, he keeps on staring. It's, it's being, yeah... Of course, he wants to try and intimidate me, but it's not going to intimidate me. I'm just trying to keep, keep my focus and keep cool, you know? Because against John Salter, I remember I was fighting emotional. I had some stuff, and then I remember I was punching him, and then I just, my ears closed, and my eyes got blacked out and just totally focused. And then I didn't hear my team, my corner man. This time I've trained on it, and I'll be really smart on this. No emotions at all, just game plan. Um, two more things for me. Um... Uh, it's going to be a pretty obvious answer from you on this one, but who wins out of Lima and Musasi for the vacant middleweight title, and why? Musasi. <laughs> no, I guess we win because Lima's coming up a division. You know, it's it's of course you can't underestimate him because he's 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 a fucking good fighter, and but Musasi's been in the game for so long, and he's cutting weight. He's, he has to cut weight to reach middleweight, and Liam has to put on weight to reach middleweight. So that's already a big advantage, you know? And, of course, they sparred a few years back then, and it was quite 
you could see you well Garrett said that there was easy and there wasn't wasn't really much of a was that it, you know? Lima wasn't in his in his in his good form, he wasn't on stamina and that, but still it, it was like a not an even matchup. And and finally, um Presumably, you want to win as well on Saturday night, not just to quash the beef to to to, to with, with Fabian, but to enhance your status in the middleweight division. Because obviously, you are probably only one, two, three fights away from fighting for the title. Um, yeah. But it must you must want to win so that you can potentially headline a European series. I think it'll be next year now in Holland. I know this was a similar question to earlier, but. That must be one of the motivating factors as well. Yeah, definitely, definitely. It motivates me a lot to fight in Holland and just headline the fight. That would be, yeah, that's just, that's a dream come true. I believe there will be so many people coming down, not even just from the Holland and Netherlands. I mean, like I said before, I was living in Spain for 18 years and I got friends coming over a lot, flying down to Holland just as tourists, you know? And they all say, whenever you fight in Europe and there are people allowed to come in, like without the COVID stuff happening, um, they're all coming down and it's going to be loads of people coming watching. Final one from me, actually. You mentioned lockdown. What's the biggest single thing that you've learned about yourself in the last six months? Oh, getting my calm. Yeah. <laughs> being calm, being, being down, down in earth, you know, just relax and just concentration, having good concentration, yeah. Thanks, bud. See you later. Thank you. Thank you, man. Good speaking to you. Twitter, Leonte. Hello, sir. I wanted to ask you if you could please elaborate what uh, did you go wrong uh, in uh, your last fight, uh, the one against uh, John Salter? John Salter. What I did wrong over there, I, I was fighting. I was fighting with emotions that night. And what happened was we, I was, we were sticking to the game plan. The first 30 seconds was great. And then after he was going to come in, I hit him with the right with the right hand straight. And that's when I saw fear in his eyes. And exactly when I saw fear in his eyes, it gave me like, I don't know, I thought I had some superpowers or something. But it just it put my eyes on vision. It closed my ears and I came in with a flying, flying knee. That was the no-go for against John Sauter because he's a really good wrestler. Well, I, I, at the end, I did that. And I landed on my back. If you could, if you see the fights, all the times that I was landing on my back, it was because I was jumping over the flying knee or I was doing something stupid. The times that he tried to put, pull me down to the floor, I actually defend that. So I, hopefully I could have a crack at John Sauter in the future again and make up to my mistakes. What are some major changes you had to make uh, in a training camp uh, given the uh, ongoing COVID-19 uh, emergency? Uh, not much of a change. I mean, at the beginning, I was going down to Spain to get some good training done because back in the Netherlands, we couldn't really train and the weather is really crappy over there. It's always raining. So when the sun was shining, we'd train outside, but we also had to be two meters apart from each other. So my brother and I drove back down to Spain. We were living there uh, in, the, in, like, in the forest. It's always nice weather and people get caught. Well, we secretly meet up with friends and people that train and we just had some training done. Then we drove back to Holland. We were training a lot in Musashi's gym and at the same place where we always train, to be honest. You obviously have studied your next opponent, uh, but I want to ask you, uh, what makes you believe uh, you will be the first man uh, to inflict a defeat to Edward? Because of my style. I believe of my power and my will and my style. I'll be the first man to defeat this guy in a brutally bad form way. Thank you very much, sir. Best of luck. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much, Costello. We're all done. Uh, we will uh, let you go and be joined shortly here by Kent Coppin. All right. Thank you.
All right. We're now being joined by Ken Koppinen. If you have any questions, go ahead and use the raise hand button. We'll start from a, with a few from within the room. Uh, Ken, it's, it's been a it's been a long time coming, but but Venezuela Europe is is finally back. It, it's felt like ages. Just tell us how you're feeling in fight week now. Yeah, it's excited because like you said, it's been a long time coming. Uh, for myself, it's been November last year was my last fight. Um, obviously, with the, what's gone on over the world, um, we haven't been able to do much. Um, so yeah, for me, it's just it's it's amazing. Like, I love being in in this in these scenarios. Um, in the hotel room, seeing different fighters, seeing how they act. Yeah, it's amazing. And just tell us how lockdown was for you. Um, a long six months for everyone, but what were you doing to, to keep yourself fresh physically and mentally? Um, lockdown for me was, was amazing. Um, I, I really enjoyed it. A word that someone came up with was reinvigorated, and it is true. Uh, I spent a lockdown time just working on myself mentally. Uh, physically as well. Um, sorry about my mask, everyone. It's really annoying me as well. Um, yeah, I worked on myself a lot mentally. Um, physically, not as much because I didn't really need to. Just enough just to take over. But for the mental side, yeah, really, uh, I can always say it was awoken um, in what I was doing and what I was and what I need to do. And just moving towards um, Saturday night, it's a, it's a middleweight affair on the main card, um, and you'll obviously be very familiar with that division. Um, what do you make of Will Fleury and how do you see him um, matching up to, to some of the guys you've faced in the past? Um, yeah, look, if you look at the people I've fought in the past, with even the two losses from Fabian Walker um, to then to the, to the win against Lesius Cara to then the loss against Manoff. Um, no disrespect to Will, you don't put him at the same calibre as any of those small key fighters. Uh, and that's no disrespect to him. You just you don't because he hasn't got the same resume as any of them. Um, he hasn't fought any of the people they have fought, um, which again is it, it could be a blessing, it could be a curse for me. It depends on how I take it into the fight. Um, I don't take the fight lightly. I, I treat it exactly the same as when I fought Melvin Manoff. Um, I go in there and I will make sure we put everything on the line. Which really sucks. There you go, Santiago. And greetings from Amsterdam. How are you doing? Uh, hello, my friend. You okay? I'm doing fine. Thank you so much for asking. So I have two questions for you. How was the experience for you sharing the cage with such a big legend as Melvin Manhoof? Yeah, yeah. Hey, man. Was, like I said, uh, I was never, ever going to win that fight. So I watched Melvin Manhoof when I was growing up. Um, and before, in all the interviews, um, they, they're asking me, Big Don McCarthy, they said, oh, so how do you feel about the fight? And I was like, yeah, do you know what, man? Just, I'm fighting Melvin Manoff. Like, I don't care if I win, I don't care if I lose. Like, he is on my resume as a guy I fought against, a guy I grew up watching. So I instantly, after my after the fight, my performance coach and I, we went back to the room and we, we sat down and we spoke. And he was like, you know why you lost that fight? And I was like, uh, is he better? Is he well, yeah, he is a, a lot better, more experienced fighter. But I, I, I instantly gave him that that mass amount of respect where I couldn't I couldn't beat him because I, I, I truly wanted to just share the cage with him. So on, on the levels of experiences, it was the most amazing experience of my life. Beautiful how you speak about him. He's also from Amsterdam, the same city as where I live, and you got me a little emotional, man. Beautiful how you spoke about him. Last question for me. Look at, it, look at the end of the fight, how emotional I got when I was like, I just hugged him, I put his hand up. I was like, yeah, no, man, no. Like, come on. Like, what a guy. Yeah, that was beautiful. Last thing for me, that was not only a fun fight that you had with Melvin, but also a very close fight. Would you like to rematch Melvin Manuf in 2021 during an Amsterdam Bellator event? Um, no, because I'm middleweight. He, I don't think he wants... Well, two, two, two reasons I won't. Is one, because I want to I want to stay at 84. Like, I, I fought Sakara at 90, what, like heavyweight, and I fought Manuf at like heavyweight. That's not me, because I had to, to stay at that weight... I had to eat more than I normally eat. I, I was putting on, I had to stay, and I found, I think I weighed in, for man, I think I weighed in 90 kilos, when, uh, so her 200 pounds, I think the max was 205. And I was eating a lot. Um, and, no, nah, because it's done, like, it's, I don't need to. I, I know, 
I, had, I know why I lost that fight and I know the reasons why I lost it. And I, I wouldn't want to put myself mentally in that situation again where if I fight anyone else, I can take away that respect for them now. Like the respect I had for Melvin Manoff, if I fight someone else, I don't have respect for them. I can't, I'll always have respect for Melvin Manoff. We would still welcome you in Amsterdam and good luck on the Saturday come fight night, sir. I'd love to fight in Amsterdam. Thank you very much. Gareth? Hi, Ken. It's Gareth A. Davis. How are you doing, bud? Very well, thanks. you, sir. Very good. Now, you're, you're a fascinating character, um, and your life's changed enormously, hasn't it? You know, um, from soccer, from a term in jail, all kinds of things. And, you know, you're, you're an incredible person now, and it, and it shines through in you as well, and we see it a lot. I, I agree with that last journalist as well. You didn't just fight Melvin Manhoff, a hero of yours. I, I was there cage side. It was an incredibly close fight. Um, and I reckon if you hadn't seen Melvin Manhoff, you might have won that fight, if you know what I mean. Um, yeah. um, but what, what, I, what I want, you've already developed a reputation. Um, we've seen it with so many MMA guys where they go through an early period of their career and they're developing. They get their man strength, in inverted commas, and then they, they're just so relaxed in the cage, relaxed with what they're doing and experience, that they can take on anyone. You've shown that. You know, um, even the Alessio Sakara. I mean, he's a big name as well. You've got a victory over him. He, he's, a, he's a legend in the country we're in right now, in Italy. So you must be quite happy where you sit, and know that if you just keep the wins going, you're going to get that title shot. You're going to fight more big names because physically you're you're a handful for anyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I, I I completely agree. Um, again, when if you if you look back to when I fought Baby and Walter Gazada, um, I was I was I was I was not focused on this sport. I was still doing other sports, I was still playing Aussie rules football. I was a professional boxer fighting twenty I had twenty fights in one year in professional boxing, as well as fighting Walter Gazada and Fabian Edwards. Um I wasn't taking this I wasn't taking I was just looking for money, uh, a means of money where when I got offered the Sakara fight, um someone said to me, Look, if you if you win this fight, you will get looked after by Bellas for and what do you mean? They said, Well they, they, I'm sure they'll give you a contract. So I put everything into the Skyro fight. Um, someone said to me, it reinvigorated, and, that, and that's what happened. Like, I, I, I was born. I, was, I, I realized that if I give everything to one sport, not three, four different sports, but still playing football, I was still fighting professionally. Um, so I was playing, playing semi professional football, earning money. I was playing um, Aussie rules football, not earning money, just for fun. Fighting boxing professionally for money. Um, and then I was I was just fighting for like, David Edwards. You look at my physique. You look at me as a person. You look at Walter Gazada. I was fighting at 170 pounds. Like I looked awful. I had no. I, I was just. I wasn't. I wasn't invested into the sport. Um, after the after the, the Sakara fight, I invested myself. And we are here now. And yeah, it's, it just. I think. The fact that I've I've really invested myself into just one sport, not multiple different sports, I believe. I, I, I do think I think I'll be a trouble for anyone. Um, yeah, and I do hope you keep progressing and get that that world title fight. Um, it was fascinating what you said just now about being awoken through lockdown. Um, a lot of us had quite similar experiences where we had to pause in our lives. You know, and we saw nature in a different way, and we saw nature react in a different way. We saw waters in venice return with fish in the water didn't we? i don't know if you saw all the things we we all went through a life change and um when you say that you went through mental changes are you able to elaborate on those at all it is one of them for example just concentrating on one thing yeah well the main the main the main, the main thing is it was was concentrating on one sport um because i was so I was so naturally gifted at all sports. I was, whatever sport I did, any of my friends was like, you, you can do any sport. And I just so I did. I was just, I was always busy, just, oh, let's do this, let's do that, I'll do that, I'll do that. Where now it's, oh, let's step back, let's focus on what, what's at hand, what tasks we can achieve, and let's actually, because I'm only 28, 
Uh, I've got, well, Melbourne Manos is 43 and he had a fight. So potentially I can fight up to 43 years old. I'd love, and he had, I think he had a world title fight of 41 or 40. So mm. if, if I give everything to this one sport now, and I, and I have, and I am, like, over lockdown, my mental is just focusing on everything I'm going to be doing for training-wise, mental, meditation, uh, breathing exercises, everything I am doing is, is solely for this sport and to become the best I can be. And just this one sport, not hundreds of other sports. Um, look, looking ahead, I've got two more little questions. Looking ahead to Lima and Musasi for the vacant middleweight title, how do you see that going, Kent? Um, tough fight. I, I, I really like Musasi, um, and we all know Lima's deadly. Um, difficult, in my opinion. Um, difficult pick, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't. I, 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 I'd... Tough one. It's literally, flip a coin. If you, if and you, you look, Masasi, yeah. I, I'd, I'd tell you Musasi. <laughs> And, and do you want both of those guys on your resume one day? Are they guys you look at and think, oh, I'd like to fight with them? I'll fight anyone. From, from now on, I will I'll happily fight anyone. Mentally, I, 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 can, I can cope with anyone. doesn't matter who they are. All right, we'll take two more. Uh, Luchazar. Hello, Kent. You hear me? Yes, my friend. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. So we haven't seen you since last November when you submitted Andy, Man Andy Manzolo. And I want to ask you, like, how long is it actually a one-year layoff in the field of combo sports? Because one year away from professional football or, let's say, basketball isn't the same as being on a one-year hiatus from MMA or boxing. Yeah. What is that feel like? One year and no fights, nothing. Um, again, I, I enjoyed it. As, uh, as a, a part of me is, is eager to get in, like, I, I can't wait for Saturday. Don't get wrong, I, I really can't wait because I can show what I can do again. But yeah, to have 10 months, 11 months off, it, I, I, I spend time with my family, my friends, uh, when we could, obviously, um, social distancing. Um, yeah, it was, like I said, mentally, it was great because I, I know what I can do before, and it was just, it felt everything was was rushing like it was all like I never had from after the November fight it was like yeah you're supposed to be fighting now and it's like okay well I'll get straight back in where now I've had that 10 months off to really sit and go this is this is a dream this is this is a dream which is coming true this is now a reality like, I can I can I can see what's what where the path is leading me where before it was just like yeah you've got to fight 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 now it's I've sat down I've worked out the plan and the route for where we're going to go uh, with my team um, and, and that's where we're going to end up. Well, that's it. Thank for the honest answer and good luck, brother. Thank you very much. Hello, sir. We'll it's take our last Peter question from Peter Leonte. Okay. Uh, just wanted uh, to ask you, okay, you spoke uh, in a beautiful way about uh, your latest opponents, uh, but, you know, you broke... Mm, all the Italians, uh, Italian fans' hearts when you KO'd uh, Alessio Sakara at Bellator Genoa. What do you remember from that night? The, the crowd silence. Um, yeah. And, <laughs> and so, so my last fight, Andy Manzola, uh, Alessio Sakara was there, and he came into my changing room in front of everyone and, and came up and shook my hand and spoke to me and as a true fighter, because although I, I came to his hometown and, and, and beat him, he, he's, he's, he's still showing me respect. And I, I just I learned the respect of the Sakara as well, because that's that's he's, he's taught me that's what fighters do. Like you don't you don't just brush it off and think oh, I hate him. He beat me in hometown. Like he come up to me in in London and shook my hand and, and told me that like, good luck tonight. I'll be watching, and I'm very much grateful for that. I'll ask you the. Oh, sorry, sorry, please yeah. continue. Sorry, my bad. Uh, I'll ask you the same question I asked uh, Will Flurry uh, a few minutes early, earlier. Do you think that he will stand and bang with you on Saturday night? 
Well, obviously, we would have said yes. Ken wants to stand and bang. Does <laughs> um, Will want to stand and bang with me? I don't know. Uh, I don't think he does. But it's like I said, if whoever he wants to take the fight, I'm going to finish it. I'm not going to be disrespectful, but I know I know how this fight plays out. I've worked harder than he has. I have worked harder than any fighter has in every aspect of this fight. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Good luck. Thank you very much. All right, cheers, Kent. Appreciate your time. And we'll be, uh, we'll be joined shortly by Akon Wanless. Thank you. Good All right, we're now being joined by Akon Wanless. If you've got any questions, please go ahead and use the raise hand button. We'll start with a few from within the room. Uh, and it's, it's been a long time coming, but Bellator Europe is, is back at last. Um, and it's fight week here in Milan. Just tell us how you're feeling now, now that you're here. The force is strong. <laughs> uh, I'm super excited, and I, I can't wait to get into the cage and have that cage door locked and just unleash the force. And just been a long time coming like a long a long long time and you, you've mentioned it's been such a long time what have you been doing during lockdown to keep yourself uh, fresh and, and, and fit mentally and physically um <laughs> i've got like a quite, quite a funny story actually um during the lockdown and even before the lockdown when the gym started to shut and stuff um i had 
luckily enough, I had a next door neighbor and he was an ex boxer. So I never spoke to him before, but uh, I started training outside in the back garden because that's all the only option I had. And then uh, he popped out one night and he was like, Oh, yeah, yeah, I used to do some boxing and stuff. And I was like, Right, that's it. You're my training partner for the whole of this, of this COVID. And we thought it was only going to be a couple of weeks and then the gyms were going to open and stuff. But oh man, it was like a solid three months, nearly, 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 nearly even longer. But every single day, come rain or shine, even the dog was out as well. We spent three plus hours just grinding and, and just perfecting our craft and just, you know, just enjoying, enjoying their training. So I've definitely leveled up during this training camp, during the COVID and stuff. And just looking at your record, you've got four career wins, two of which have come through KO or TKO, two of which have come through submission. So a lot of variety in your game. How do you see Saturday night going? Um, have you got any thoughts on, on where you think that fight might, might end up? Of course we'll crush him. When he stops running, then he's going to get caught. If he goes to the ground, you know I can finish there too. So just my only line I'm saying for this fight is that it's not going to the judges. He likes to go to the judges and he likes to extend the fights. He likes to play it safe. But I'm not that type of guy, you know. I pull out my lightsaber and I get to work. All right, we'll go to Tudor Leonte. Hello, sir. How are you? What's up, man? How are you doing? I'm fine as well. Thank you very much. Uh, I John, I was curious. Uh, how are you planning to fight uh, against uh, you know a fighter that has uh, who has sorry uh, so much experience uh, than you? Well, I think if you look through my career, I haven't really fought anyone who's had full experience other than my first few fights. So it's a it's a very normal of me. I know experience does count, and it really does matter. But when you look at the skills. When you look on paper, it does look like the like I'm the underdog, but when you look at the skills, that's definitely not the the, the case. I'm more of a well-rounded athlete. Uh, I'm more of a stronger, faster, sharper. I have the force. I have a lightsaber, and he has an axe. So it's like it's just <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> so Davis has a very peculiar fighting style. He adopts that karate fighting style. How are how are you planning, you know, to counter that, uh, you know, his fighting style? I'm not really focused on his fighting style. Like, I'm just going to employ my own fighting style. I set the pace. I set the range. I set the distance. I control all the exchanges and the fight. The fight just goes my way. Uh, do you feel confident enough, you know, to pick how the fight is going to end? Is what, sorry? Uh, how the fight is going to end. Can you please give me your pick on how the fight is going to end? Like I said before, when he stops running, I know he's going to be running quite a lot. If he stays there, it's going to be a big mistake for him, and the fight will end very quickly, either via, via vicious knockout or one of my Darth Vader chokes. Okay, thank you very much, sir. I appreciate uh, your time, and best of luck. Thank you. Do you take care, mate? Oh, yeah. Come on, yeah. What's up, oh, It's Gareth A. Davis. Yeah, I'm very good, thank you. How are you? I'm awesome, mate. I'm awesome. Just chilling. Um, one of the one of the stories just mentioned for lockdown about the the boxer. Could I just ask his name, please? Pete. I can't remember his last name. Pete. <laughs> We'd like to find out who that is, because obviously that will have. You know, it's a single martial art the boxers do. Um, it will have really sharpened your stand-up skills, which will benefit you against Davis, won't it? Yes, mass massively. He struggles with boxers. He struggles with people getting close range. He, uh, he definitely, his last few fights where the guys were just coming forward. And I wouldn't even say it was intelligent pressure. It was just, just pressure. And uh, he struggled a lot. Like, he was meant to put them guys away. But... You know, they took him the distance, they, they landed a few right hands, landed a few kicks, and well, when I get in there, it's going to be a vicious story. What was the single most thing that you learned about yourself during the six months, these six months of the lockdown? You know what? I, 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 I used to 
outside youth dinner, I used to strip, right? I used to uh, hustle and make my money by going out on the weekends and, you know, everyone's seen the chocolate men, everyone's seen all that sort of stuff. If you haven't, then now you know. <laughs> and um, since COVID happened, all that stopped. And that just allowed me to take that 10% that I used to use to, to focus and perform, because it's a performance job, in that, to really put it into my, into my mixed martial arts and fully, wholly, 110% focus on just fighting. And I feel like in the lockdown, of not knowing when I'm going to fight, having fights cancelled, um, struggling with money and, and everything, struggling with, like, uh, like sometimes, you know, you just just not being able to find a, a way of thinking, like, all right, cool, when, when's this next bread going to come in? When's the uh, next fight going to happen? Are we going to go back into lockdown? So just like everyone else, right? But at that point in my career where I needed to, to go and needed to drive and needed to make it, when everything just paused and stopped, that really, really pointed out to me that I want this as bad as I say I do. I want this as bad as I want to breathe. It really did just show me that I am really dedicated to this life and that I love mixed martial arts. I love being a martial artist and no situation, no pandemic, no world disaster can stop me from doing what I passionately love and want to do with, with my life. So that's, what I, that's a big thing I found out. So that's one of the great headlines of the day you've given us. Probably the leading headline, which is "No more stripping. I'm fi- I'm just fighting from now on." Um, yes, that's, a, that's a short caption big line. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, one other thing, and this is a really important thing, and we all looked at this, and we were all awoken during lockdown when when Black Lives Matters happened. Um, mm. How did you? What I'm what I'm interested in is in our sphere. Um, because having been around fight sports a very long time, like I'm really old, I've been around it 30 years. My mm. experience yeah. is there isn't a lot of racism inside the fight sports industry. And I wondered whether you thought about BLM within our industry and without our industry. I, I really did. Like um, Everything that I've seen in this world has, has actually hurt me quite a lot. And um, I did, at, at first, I did really struggle with how to come out and and tackle that and you know how how to how to handle that as, as myself and um i just found that it's it's really hard for one person to try and save the world and just like how michael jackson said you know a, a big inspiration of mine if you want to make a change in the world you've got to start with changing the man in the mirror and i went about and just looked at how i treat people how i treat other people who are who are not black how i treat other people who are you know maybe indian or um some of a, a different race that that maybe am I being not necessarily racist, but am I treating everybody exactly the same how I want to be treated? And I guess that's just the the, the theme that I stuck with, and something that I that just used and helped and helped to um, improve my relationships in life, and helped to just improve the the bubble around me, and and uh, hopefully I can inspire people around. Uh, and being on a massive platform like Bellator. Can definitely help me to inspire people to be more nicer to each other and uh, and obviously the fight game is a bit it's a, you see us going at it and all that sort of stuff but somewhere somewhere somehow people will see the true colors of you and if you just treat everybody how you like to be treated in the general general public in the general world regardless of race color sex gender then i feel like we will make a big leap forward as as a humanity That's a great answer, my brother. Thank you very much for your honesty. Thank you. Black Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll be joined shortly by Alexandra Plamenova.
All right, we're now being joined by Alexandra Plamenova. Uh, if you have any questions, please use the raise hand feature. We'll take a couple from inside the room. It's, uh, it's been a long time for Bellator, but an even longer wait for you to, to join Bellator. Um, it's five weeks now. Just tell us how you're feeling. Well, I'm really excited that I'm here because it's my dream promotion. So I can't wait to become a Saturday, five day. And uh, it, it's been a long time in lockdown for everybody. Um, but um, what have you been doing to keep yourself um, fresh and fit? Uh, and ready for, for fight week. Yes, man, in Bulgaria, the situation was not very good with the COVID, but we were worked about two and a half uh, months. So it was very hard for professional MMA players to uh, to train and to keep going. But I trained at my home. And then when we were allowed to go out, I did some sprints and something like that. It's like uh, all the world, the world was on COVID station, so shit happens. And it, it's clear from your, your first answer that you're very excited to be here. Just tell us how it feels uh, in your own words to be making your, your Bellator debut on Saturday night. Well, I'm, I'm very excited and very, uh, I'm feeling wonderful because uh, here, all the people are to care about and maybe I feel calm this time and I'm well prepared and I think that it will be a great debut for me because it's my dream. I have worked all the time for this moment. All right, Luchazar. Alexandra, привет to Luchazar to the Rofu BG. Uh, uh, Hello, Alexandra. So, Saturday night you're making history with your Bellator debut, being the, the first Bulgarian female fighter that is fighting under the Bellator banner. What does this mean for you? Well, I'm very proud that I'm Bulgarian, and you know, I had uh, I have uh, three gold medals in IMF, uh, one world, two Europeans. And I think that's a chance to, uh, to show the world that uh, Bulgarians are very good fighters. So yes, indeed. proud that I will represent our flag. Your opponent, uh, Chiara Penku, she's an Italian. They say home advantage is always huge in combat sports, even in times like this where there are no fans. You have any worries in that regard? At all, for this question, no, because uh, every time I am fighting with people who are from from the country, I am so I I don't care. Curious with at all. Yes, I uh, know that all the people from Bulgaria are behind me, so it's in my mind. <laughs> you damn right. Uh, she has a total of four wins, and all of them are via submission. Do you pay attention to stuff like that, and how much does it matter what she's good at in regards for your game plan? Of course, she's a good striker, top opponent, and as you see, she's a good grappler. But I also believe on, my, on myself, on my grappling, and on my strategy because we are both prepared so now it's time for strategies and we'll show what he can and how was the training cap for this fight were there any aspects of your game you trained more or less uh, this time my uh, strategy is very different than the others so i i hope i can show what uh, we were working with my coach Nikolai. My camp was in Varna, Shukwadi Bozhansky. And I I feel prepared. I feel prepared. Uh, was everything fine with the weight cut and are you still cutting weight or everything is fine? <laughs> you, you know my last fight was on 48 kilos so 
this time I'm I'm eating other things. All <laughs> the people, are very, all the fighters are very jealous because, <laughs> uh, for example, yesterday I ate cakes and they were so jealous. <laughs> but <laughs> now I'm fifty-two point six this morning, so. So I'm hungry about the fight only. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you said about the quarantine, but how did the last six months were here a toll on your fitness and your form? Uh, how did you manage the COVID crisis? Yes, you, you, you know that was hard in Bulgaria. But uh, at all, I'm a, a conditional trainer. Uh, that's my job uh, on the gym. So I I took some kettlebells, some uh, bands, and so on, and I tried to be on form all the time. And immediately when we went to the gym, when when we came back to the sun, my team, uh, I started preparing uh, for all the things that can happen because I know that. In this crisis, uh, there may be some opportunities, and here I'm, I'm on Bellator here, and this is a great opportunity for me. All right, Gareth. Hi, uh, Alexander. Gareth A. Davis from, from the Telegraph in London and TalkSport Radio and Channel 5. How are you? Fine, thank you. Good. Um. Can I ask, first of all, could you clarify, you said you want, was it three gold medals? Yeah. In, in, in MMA in Bulgaria? Yes, IMF. Uh, first was uh, uh, 2015 European Championship at Birmingham. Second gold medal was, uh, they were three in a row. Second was in Las Vegas World Championship. And the third one was uh, 2016 also in Prague, Czech Republic, uh, European gold. And this fight's at straw weight, but that wasn't at straw weight, no? Yes. Uh, I have for uh, uh, my IMF amateur career was on straw weight. Yeah. Yeah, I have for uh, two fights, 48 and uh, two fights, 20, uh, straw weight. So now I just not getting weight, but I feel good. In in my um, knowledge, um, forgive my ignorance. In my knowledge of Bulgaria, um, it's like in Olympic sports, it's always been very strong in things like wrestling and weightlifting, sports like that. Is MMA a new thing in Bulgaria? Is it small? Is it growing? How is it? Area? Could you tell us? Uh, here. Maybe the last uh, two years is is growing because uh, we have more um, knowledge and uh, you know when we are watching uh, UFC, Bellator, and these great events, we can learn from, from them. So also a lot of people from uh, America, or United States, and from Brazil come to. Uh, do a camp here, so we can we can teach by them. And okay. are, are you are you one of very few elite female fighters from Bulgaria? Is it very small and growing? Do you want to be a role model in that sense to help <laughs> your sport to grow? Uh, of course, but in our country we have uh, only two. We are. Only two pro MMA players, females. Uh, the first one uh, we were uh, straw weight, so we had a battle two years ago, and I won the fight. So definitely now I'm the the only one. In the but, but, in that, my, but my final question: In that sense, you're making a new path for so many people who are going to see you in your country, is that correct? Yes, 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 of course. And does that matter to you? 
Oh no, uh, I'm very, uh, I'm very excited that uh, a lot of people of Bulgaria will, will be watching me, and I know they're behind me, and that makes me confident. Thank you, Alexander. Thank you very much. Cheers. All right, our last question will go to Tito Leonte. Hello, Alexandra. It's a pleasure to finally meet you. Um, I wanted to ask you, first of all, how are you? How, is, uh, how are you, generally? I'm great. I'm feeling very good here. They're caring about me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, what are your thoughts about Chiara Penko? Did you study her? Uh, what do you expect from her? Stuff like this. Well, Chiara is a tough opponent, as I say, I say, I say it. So I think uh, she will be well prepared because it's uh, on Bellator there are no uh, no weak opponents at all. So uh, she is uh, maybe more more striker than grappler, what I saw from from her fight. So uh, I think that it will be a good. It will be a good fight. Watch. <laughs> I will watch it for sure. Um, you had an amazing run uh, in your amateur career. You won several uh, medals in uh, IMF. Uh, do you think that your experience, you know, your previous experience, will be a factor in this uh, in this fight? Uh, will be a factor? I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe because uh, for me that is a great experience because you're. I, I was fighting uh, in front of a lot of people that uh, I I don't know, and I think that she will be a little nervous about that. But don't know. And last one, uh, uh, you fought at out of weight, uh, you fought at star weight. Uh, are you, do you struggle in general to find the opponents at out of weight, given that, you know, you said that your natural uh, weight category is out of weight? Uh, are you having difficulties in finding opponents? And this is why you are choosing to fight at star, uh, star weight? Uh, yes, uh, although it's uh, very hard to find opponents uh, 48 kilos, especially here in Europe. But uh, I think that uh, when I don't cut weight, it's also good for me because I feel calm and it's a matter of strategy. But here, the chance is very great. Uh, Sorry, last one. Uh, if you win, are you planning to stay at straw weight or are you planning to drop again at atom weight in a, a future? In future, at all, maybe I, uh, I, I would choose to be a straw weight for the future. Thank you very much. Best of luck for your fight. Thank you. Goodbye. Right. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thank you, Alexandra. Uh, that concludes today's session, and uh, appreciate your time. Thank you. Have a nice day.